secret is that, to be honest with you, I would have never imagined in a million years that I would be at a meeting like this, let alone be speaking at a meeting like this. And let me explain why. If you had said to me four years ago, let's go back four years, and you'd said to me, Steve, there's this magical way of eating where people eat as much as they want and they just magically lose weight without even trying and their chronic conditions just sort of melt away, re they reverse themselves and they get off in many cases, uh, or they get off many of their medications, in many cases, all of their medications. I would have said, you're crazy. There's no way that's true. You're, you sound like a quack. And uh, I would have said, you know, first of all, if that were true, I'm sure I would have heard about that in medical school. And if not medical school, then definitely residency training. And if not residency training, I'm sure I would have heard about it when I got out into the real world of practice. Um, and then if you'd said to me, well, Steve, look, you know, not only are those things true, but you yourself are going to eat that way in the near future. And you're going to transform your own health. And after transforming your own health, you're going to help many of your patients do the same and transform their own health eating this way. And you're going to become so passionate about it, you're going to actually someday maybe even speak about it. I would, have, I would have said, there's just no way this is going to happen. I would have thought, you know, first of all, um, if you had said it was a plant-based diet, my initial reaction, my knee-jerk reaction, I don't know how many of you have had this initial knee-jerk reaction, but when I, if, if I would have been told it was a plant-based diet, I would have thought, you know, plants, that sounds like rabbit food. There's no way I'm going to eat a rabbit food diet. Um, now, let's skip ahead. I'm just going to, I think you guys can imagine by now that I do eat this way. Otherwise, I wouldn't be up here. Uh, I do love the food, but that would have been my initial reaction. Well, needless to say, uh, if none of these things were true, again, I wouldn't be up here. All these things are true and have come true. And I'm so excited and so honored to be able to share my personal story and my professional story and many of my patients' stories. You guys like stories? All right, good. I thought you guys might like stories. So with that said, actually, I'd like to start with a story. And uh, as Jeff mentioned, I created or co-created a group last year, a group program with a nurse practitioner who I work with named Maureen. And we called it Life 180. And we called it Life 180 because we thought that if people transform their plate the way they eat, that they could transform their lives 180 degrees. And so... Um, one of the patients I'm going to, I'm going to show some videos, actually. The first patient I'm going to show you uh, is actually, um, he was very skeptical that this would work. In fact, he didn't even want to be there. His name was David, or is David, I should say. And uh, he was kind of the last guy. You know, I thought I couldn't do this. And I thought, well, if I can do this, anybody can do it. But now I say, no, if David can do it, anybody can do it. Because to be honest with you, just pull this up here real quick. Um, I call him the grumpy skeptic because he only came to our group because his wife wanted to be there. He just kind of was tagging along, supporting her, but he actually admits that he wanted to prove this didn't work. So does anyone want to see David's video where, it, it, no, and he was a retired truck driver as well. He admits he didn't never ate well. So does anyone want to see what happens when you take a retired truck driver who never ate well and didn't want to be there? And wanted to prove it didn't work, and then see what happens when you put them on a plant-based side? Okay. Here we go. Here's David. Uh, at first, I wasn't impressed, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm 66 years old, and I don't like change, <laughs> you know? And uh, I was used to, I drove truck for 43 years, and uh, my diet was not real well. I ate wherever I could find room to park a truck. So they put me on this plant-based diet. Uh, first couple weeks, they called me grumpy. <laughs> and uh, had a little bit of an attitude. <laughs> but uh, I was gonna prove to them that it doesn't work. That was my whole objective. <laughs> so I came to uh, support my wife, it wasn't for me. <laughs> So after three weeks, I had lost 15 pounds, wow. not trying. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, I didn't know what the uh, heck was going on. <laughs> so I uh, started checking the numbers, and I'm going, you know, I couldn't believe what had happened. You know, I, 
if I was under 168 or 170, I was impressed. All of a sudden, my numbers were down to 104. And I mean, that, that, I, I've never been 104, ever. In 13 years, I've never seen a 104. Now, my temperature's higher than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, uh, long story short is, you know, that, that theory of it wasn't going to work, the numbers don't lie. Uh, my last uh, reading for A1C was 6.7. So, I mean, that was remarkable. The numbers just don't lie. So, it, it does work. Rather, even if you're not trying, <laughs> it works. It really does. It was really impressive. Uh, there's no more blood pressure medicine. There's no more diabetes medicine. There's no more uh, uh, cholesterol medicine. I am on absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. As it works. But this, the, the plant-based diet really works. It really does. If, if you give it a half a chance, you're, you're gonna succeed. There's no way not to succeed if you give it a half a chance. You need it bad. I mean, who, who wants to lose their feet? Nobody wants to lose their feet or lose their eyesight. So, I mean, you know, you talk about being given a second chance at life. You know, all kidding aside, you just, uh, it chokes you up a little bit inside, give you a lump in your throat because you've been given a second chance. My grandkids are gonna be able to, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be around for a while. No, I, thanks to Dr. Lewinda, the uh, plant-based diet, and the group. I appreciate all of you. Thank you. All right. You, like, you guys like that story? Yes. yes. So I don't know about you, but that story gives me a lot of hope, right? Because you would, I would have thought, and I'm sure you guys, um, I imagine many of you would have thought when you, if you first met David that maybe he wouldn't be able to do that. So to be honest with you, most doctors, including myself, and um, I suppose we could probably include nurses in this and, and other medical professionals, we know more or less just about as much as the public knows when it comes to nutrition. And one of the stories that I was led to believe, and I think all of us were more or less led to believe, is that most chronic diseases are primarily genetic and or a normal consequence of aging. Have you guys heard this before or maybe led to believe this as well? So for me personally, I did believe this, and it had me very worried personally. And I was worried personally because of my family history. I'm going to share with you some of this in a moment, right here, right now. So my grandfather, my father's father, had a heart attack, his first heart attack. He had, actually had two, but his first heart attack at age 38. Now that's pretty young. And he had a, went on to have a bypass surgery in his 60s, ended up with kidney failure, and was on dialysis in his 70s, and died, unfortunately, of a second heart attack at the age of 79. Now, if that's not bad enough, my own father had his heart attack at age 45. And maybe that's a little better, but still very young. Had a heart bypass surgery as well at age 53. He was obese, or is obese, uh, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, retinopathy, which is eye damage from diabetes, couldn't see very well. Um, fortunately, he is still alive, but um, are you guys worried about me now? <laughs> A little bit. Can you see where I'm coming from? Okay. But there was, there was one problem, one more problem my father had, which um, I think it's important I share with you all. And if anybody's squeamish, you, you're, you're welcome to close your eyes because I'm going to show you a picture that might upset you a little bit. I know we just had breakfast, but I do want you to see it if you can. Ready? You guys are quiet now. Very quiet. So this was my father's left foot about six years ago. And this is diabetic gangrene, for those of you who haven't seen it. And his doctors tried as best as they could to save this foot. And unfortunately, things didn't go very well. And not only did he have to have his foot amputated, he had to have his leg amputated. He had a below the knee amputation. And you can only imagine, I'm sure, um, how difficult this must have been for him personally to have to accept this and to have to adjust. He ended up getting a prosthetic leg and 
had to learn how to walk again. And, but it, it, it's been really hard on him and the family. But, get, but guess what? Unfortunately, I kid you not, the story gets even worse. Because six months later, as he's learning to walk with his new leg, his prosthetic leg, unfortunately, his right foot develops a problem. I think probably what happened is he was putting more pressure on the right foot and ended up getting an ulcer or a wound in the right foot. And this, I wish I could tell you that this turned out well, but it didn't. Um, he ended up having to lose, again, not only the foot, but the other leg as well. And this was within a span of about essentially a year. So he went from a walking, driving, working, very functional man, um, who, by the way, was looking forward to, for so many years, having grandchildren. We had just given him his first grandchild about six months before this all started. So he was so looking forward to playing and running around with the grandchildren, um, or first one at least, and, and then this happened. Um, so you, you can imagine, again, how devastating this must have been to him and to our family. Now, he is alive today. We're so grateful and blessed he's alive, but it's so much harder for him to live now, given this reality. Now, going back to myself, as I'm seeing my father go through this, I mean, you can only imagine what I must be going through personally as well, going, not only feeling bad for him, but really worried about myself, especially knowing about the heart disease and now this. And I thought I was doing okay. You know, I didn't drink, I didn't do drugs or smoke. I, I drank diet soda. I mean, that's, that's going to keep me healthier. I ate some salad, you know, uh, some blue cheese. Some, uh, you know, of course, it had some blue cheese and croutons and bacon bits in it. I ate more chicken than red meat because I thought, you know, I've been told that was good for me. And I had low-fat milk and uh, did my best to control my portion sizes. I was always told that portion control is the key. Didn't eat much candy, uh, didn't have dessert every day, but, and when I did, I shared it with my wife, so that, that had to have helped. Um, and I tried my best to get regular exercise. You know, I wasn't always consistent, but I did what I could. But yet, somehow I wasn't doing well. Um, at the age of 38, this was uh, four years ago, I was, uh, I'm six foot two, weighed 255. My body mass index was 33, which puts me as obese. Uh, my weight was yo-yoing up and down for years. I kept struggling with it. I had pre-diabetes, actually. I had something called fatty liver, which is, for those of you who don't know, uh, uh, inflammation in the liver due to fat accumulation. I had acid reflux on nearly a daily basis. And I was told by multiple family members that I definitely had sleep apnea, although I wasn't tested. And I was really worried I was following in my father's and, and grandfather's footsteps. And to be quite honest with you, um, I don't know how many of you felt this way, but when you're yo-yoing up and down and, and it's just not working and you're really worried, I, I, I began to feel like a failure. I felt like a, I just can't do this. I mean, I, I must not be good at it. I've failed. I'm a failure. And um, I really thought I was doomed by my genetics and my family history too. And, you know, right around this time, um, my wife and I were starting a family. Like I said, we gave my parents their first grandchild. And so these are my girls. And this is Gabby on the left, she's seven, and Emmy on the right is three. She's just celebrated, her, actually we're celebrating her birthday today, later. Um, and I had much to live for. And so you can only imagine what's going through my mind thinking, gosh, you know, um, if I have a heart attack and I, God forbid, you know, God forbid die, I'm going to leave these beautiful children and, and, um, and my wife and my family and everything. But, um, you know, and, uh, this, doesn't, this may not be very logical, but you know, one, this is true, actually. One out of three people who suffer a heart attack die of the heart attack. And I was thinking, you know, my father didn't die. My grandfather didn't die. That's two, so I'm going to be the th one out of three. And the other thing, the other aspect to this, too, is I'm a doctor. And I felt like, you know, what kind of a role model am I to my patients when they come to me and ask me for help, you know, to lose weight, to help them with their diabetes? What kind of role model am I? Um, I couldn't do it for myself. And so I was really at a crossroads. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I would say that I was probably a little bit depressed, but I, I, had, I think I sort of uh, hit it because I had to be functional. I had to you know, be a good doctor, do the, be, you know, do the best I can as a doctor, be a family man, be a husband, be a father. And so I, there was, a dep I think, a certain level of depression and probably anxiety about all this. But I, I kept it um, sort of buried. 
Um, and all of this changed, my whole life changed, on one day. I'll never forget, December 26, 2012, that's the day after Christmas, on a car ride coming home from a vacation from San Diego, my wife and I and uh, one of our children, um, and my wife puts on in the car an audiobook. My wife loves audiobooks, and I actually asked her to not put the audiobook on. I had no idea what it was, to be honest. And I, wanted to, I just wanted to relax and hear music. And I'm so glad that we listened to this audiobook. Um, you know, happy wife, happy life, right? So, um, because this audiobook really changed my life. And I've read a lot of other books since then. But this was Dr. Furman's book, Eat to Live. And my, it was recommended to my wife by a cousin and a uh, friend of ours who had really good results with it. And I really, when my wife put the audiobook on in the car, I'll be honest with you, I really wasn't even paying attention to it. I was sort of half listening to it, just pa very passively listening. But yet, as I was sort of half listening, I heard some things that really caught my attention. Some of the things I mentioned in the beginning, how you could eat as much as you want and lose weight, how people can get off of medications and reverse their chronic diseases. I'm thinking to myself, I've never heard this before. And so initially I was very skeptical, but then he really went through a lot of the science and a lot of the common sense and logic with it. And so I started to really think on that car ride, you know, wait a second, what if there's something to this? And so it encouraged me to read the whole book. And since then, I've read a few other books. And actually, what's really cool about this conference is I've looked at the authors on some of my favorite books, and I think about half of them are speaking this weekend. Two of them spoke last night, Dr. Polday and Dr. Letterman. And what I've learned in my research on plant-based diets is that the benefits are really head-to-toe, life-changing benefits. First of all, weight loss without portion control. I've never heard that before, uh, regardless of exercise. Now, there are so many benefits to exercise. You should exercise, but even if you don't, you'll still lose weight. Most people, if you, you know, do a decent job eating this way. Um, but besides weight control, prevention and reversal of so many conditions, heart disease, many cancers, diabetes, hypertension, even erectile dysfunction, kidney stones, gout, and multiple GI, gastrointestinal conditions. And, you know, it'd be one thing if it just made us healthier, but it also makes us feel better.